the reason why we started doing these workshops and why we did this Digital Futures workshop is because we want to give more people access to things that they normally don't have access to, such as like machine learning models or AI concepts that they don't normally use in their workflows. We were quite excited to do this workshop, which was fully online, kind of the first time we did it. So in the beginning I was not that sure how it would work all together with the participants, how they would interact with each other and how to organize them in groups quite, since they were quite differently skilled and coming from other parts of the world, maybe also with different time zones, so it was a quite challenge. It wasn't as simple as, okay, you guys go to that corner and, and start drawing on the same piece of paper. We had to use these online tools such as Zoom for the meetings and Miro for a collective workspace. We designed the interaction in the workshop to be more like a project-based interaction rather than a kind of like hands-on tutorial only. And we came to the conclusion that we want to try a mix of a traditional seminar-like uh, workshop where we give inputs, we give um, a lectures in this sense and show them our workflows and combine that with a hackathon style where the participants form groups, come up with their own project ideas. We focused on like giving all the bulk of the teaching in the first part and then like focusing on supporting projects in the second half. The objective was less so giving the the theory and all the, the history of machine learning and artificial intelligence and more so showing them the when to apply it, understanding how to apply it. And this idea kind of shaped the entire workshop. Okay. After the general introduction we presented what we have prepared for the workshop. That was mostly for ready to use workflows for machine learning models. And on top of that we prepared a, um, a playground model that the groups don't really have to spend a lot of time on gathering the data from somewhere, but they could directly use them. And there were initial ideas that we gave the participants as per the hackathon style, but they weren't restricted to it. They could have taken it, they could have added to it, mutated it in their own specific ways. They could have come up with their own unique ideas, which pretty much all of them did. After all the inputs we gave, we started the first brainstorming session, <laughs> all together uh, using a Miro board, which was quite exciting. 28 people were working on one screen together. And it was so fun to see all of them working at the same time so they could also get ideas from each other and seeing what the other group is working and it was also it was also this not only brainstorming but trying to find a practical solution how they could apply it in their projects was the part that I enjoyed the most. In the second day we focused heavily on the practical. It was four hours of an intense workshop with, with demos and, and explanations of machine learning models that exist out there and how to apply it onto your own problems. All up we showed them four different models. Uh, first we used the pix to pix architecture for image to image translation. The second was the deep Q learning or the deep Q network for reinforcement learning, reinforcement learning and emergent behavior. And then two out of the box models, one being the mask RCNN for image segmentation and the other being Deep Lab version 3 for style transfer, exactly. After the first two days of inputs, the groups had three full days left um, to actually develop their solutions and uh, there was a quite intense um, working process and week, I think, for all of us. At the end, we had a really nice presentation inviting a couple of people from the field that gave feedback and I think that overall it was a great experience. I really enjoyed the uh, microclimate uh, project, the uh, team microclimate project, because it is the beginning of a serious amount of research work that we actually aim to continue. The goal of team microclimate was to spot out, to highlight areas that are especially endangered or at risk to become heat islands. Their approach was twofold. First, they planned to analyze satellite images for green areas, for buildings, and on the one hand. On, on the other hand, they analyzed street view images using mask RCNN to again spot out green greenery on, on facades and so on. And then use, merge these two data layers um, to analyze for areas that are prone to become heat islands. Scale Squad team was trying to do something that is actually very, very important, which is to build uh, height uh, information about the city without having height information about the city. They were mainly focusing on predicting the urban height since most of the time even when we get OSM data and we try to work with 
city maps, we see that there is a lack of information of uh, height, building heights and also other things. So this group was trying to generate the, the heights of the building according to the footprint and so to say to understand the topologies of a building. And in this case, if we see this, if we recognize this footprint, this is usually this type of house. Let's say Austro-Hungarian houses have this height and then usually it gets the height based on the footprint of the building. So they tried to test their model. We saw the comparison between the two 3D models and then we could see it was not identical, of course, but we could see that it has a similarity and some of the footprints were already recognized. So Team Spatial Analysis were quite ambitious. They kind of departed from the idea of cities as self-organizing complex systems, um, but with the issue that many of the relations um, driving the spatial self-organization remain hidden. We don't really know why it happens. And they started with a correlation of the urban density and cost of transportation, which I think is a quite real problem. So they trained several gun models um, to investigate the relation between morphology and particular urban features such as building heights. This was uh, Both of these projects, Spatial Spatials and Scale Squads, are like very much showing us the idea of fabricating good enough, uh, a good enough representation of the real world data through machine learning is a fantastic idea and we think we, I think we should continue investing. Another interesting problem that one of the groups uh, tackled was usually it's so hard for the non-architects and non-planners to understand the space without visualizing it. Often at the early design stages where you just have these massing models, it's quite difficult to wrap your head around how this might look in the end. And the rendering process takes an immense amount of time to get there. They wanted um, to have a 3D massing model on a simple perspective and turn that into a photorealistic image by using um, a pix to pix model that was trained with screenshots of a simple massing model combined with street view images from the same area. It was a quite ambitious project. So the first trained model turned out to be a bit blurry, but then they had the really nice idea of just adding a second model, train a second pix to pix model to um, add details to the board first results. Urban Collective actually were trying to do something that, uh, as I said in the first day, they would be able to sell by the last day if they managed to achieve. The main idea started with a very direct question. I'm a developer and I want to build a hotel. Which spot is the best one? What the, what the team did was take this deep learning algorithm and assign the agent as a pinpoint uh, on a map. From there, we asked the client, the, the developer of the, um, the hotel, to assign specific weights on what they find the most important. This weighting gets fed into this reward function, which determines the specific motion of this pinpoint on this map. After a certain amount of training, what should come out of it is a pinpoint that moves directly to a place within this map that satisfies the clients uh, the most. Overall, it was a very nice experience for me and I need to say that I learned a lot together with uh, participants, from them and from the team. At first I was skeptical um, of this, this structure where we had the first two days of intense uh, lecturing and, and demoing and slipping into this last two days of the hackathon style. But in the end, I was pleasantly surprised. They were able to get it done by the end of it. The slack in between the days was popping off constantly. Um, and ultimately, I'm really happy with where the participants got to. I think it was great to see how really every participant wrapped their hat around the concept and the models we gave them, the machine learning models, and how to use them in their own domain. We really enjoyed this workshop and I think it showed in the feeling when we, we had in the end and that is exactly the reason why we want to continue. We felt already like a community in this just one week that we, we came together and we want to strengthen. We came from every side that like people want to continue this so we will do something about it. We will try to continue this and make it a more like a community based um, kind of like work.